Hi all. Um, this is just a quick session today on SNOMED codes. I've had a number of you asking for some more information about SNOMED codes and how um, they can be used, where to find them, why they're important. So we're going to run through today a little bit more about SNOMED codes and why it's so important for social prescribers and social prescribing to be um, using them in their everyday process. So all of you guys out there have been doing some absolutely fantastic work in the last nine to 12 months. And it would be a tragedy if it, were, if it couldn't be captured in some way that we didn't know what, um, how many people you guys are having wonderful interventions um, with and changing the lives of, of the, the patients that you're coming into contact with. SNOMED codes are the one way to ensure that we can measure the amount of interventions that are happening across social prescribing across the UK, let alone your local system. So why SNOMED codes are really important, that there are a number of reasons and it can be, and I'll let Najna explain in a bit more detail, but these can be really useful for you at a local level to see what kinds of people that you're having an intervention and a positive intervention with. But really, there's a there's a big part around seeing the real work that's being done by social prescribing. And the more work that we can show we are doing, the greater the attention we can generate, the more resources we can mandate should be directed and coming in our direction. There are so many reasons we need to be telling people what we're up to um, over and above um, the big brother watching this is this is about showing people the amount of work that is going on um so i'm going to hand you over to Najnin and wilma who are who i'm sure you all know um to tell you a little bit more about um snow med codes why they're important where you can find them and and, and how you can use emis to um to code your work emis and system one what to do if you don't have access to emis and system one and perhaps how you can use um, some of the arguments for SNOMED codes in getting access to EMIS and System 1, if that's something that you'd like. Um, I'll hand over to Najnim. Thank you, Liana. So firstly, um, I'll define what SNOMED actually stands for. So it stands for Systematic Nomenclature of Medicine. So it's quite a wordy wordy uh, word, so it's been uh, shortened. And so essentially there are lots, I think there's hundreds and thousands of SNOMED codes, um, but we are going to talk about two social prescribing SNOMED codes um, today. Um, why they are important. So as Liana mentioned, this is the only way we are measuring your intervention, your impact as a link worker to the communities that you work with. So it's essentially measuring the uptake to social prescribing. Um, as well as that, the DES 2020-21 contract um, stipulates that payments are being made to by referral, so there's a payment by referral method, to the primary care networks with every social prescribing referral made. Um, so obviously this is quite, quite important and may have some further impacts for the following year. Um, where to find them. So shortly, uh, the lovely Wilma is going to uh, show us a very quick uh, demo on EMIS. Um, we're going to be using EMIS today because that's what we're using in Tower Hamlets. However, there's a very similar process on System 1 as well. Um, reporting and monitoring. There's some really interesting things that uh, link workers some very seasoned link workers are doing at the moment with SNOMED codes. So there's something called a dashboard um, where all the SNOMED codes um, sort of are entered onto EMIS or System 1 and there's a back end where everything's sort of collected on like a spreadsheet, almost like a pro forma, and then it's collected on a spreadsheet where you can find out some really interesting things um, at a population level. Um, you can uh, define SNOMED codes via demographics. Um, you can, there's a multitude of ways that you can really use the data. This may not be part of your job description, but it's good to know that these SNOMED codes in your work can be used for really interesting things to make your case of why your, you, why your intervention to your patients and your communities that you work in, in your primary care network are very important. 
Okay, so um, there's two social prescribing codes that social prescribing link workers must use. Um, and this is what NHS England have instructed us to do so. So for the purpose of today's tutorial, we're going to refer to social prescribing declined as 103 and referral to social prescribing service as 106. So 103 is when you receive a referral um, and then you pick up the phone, you try to call them, and then they said, they say, oh, I don't want to be seen by a link worker. Um, so that's when they decline. So they've explicitly verbalized that they do not want to be seen. Um, 106, referral to social prescribing. This is what, this can be used in um, sort of, uh, in uh, two or three ways. So if a referrer, a GP, nurse, any referrer that you're accepting uh, physically refers you a, um, a person, uh, a, a patient, um, either through EMIS system one or it could be through your NHS email. Um, and you can also, STEMED codes, code 106 referral to social prescribing can also be used when you're conducting proactive calls. And so it can be used for support such as referrals made into the Good Sam app, um, delivery of shopping and medication. Um, you provide as a link worker providing emotional support and doing those proactive welfare calls um, and as well as the personalized plans and care plans that you're providing, practical, physical and or emotional support. In terms of when not to use the code is um, when you receive a referral, um and then you you um yeah you pick you call them and they don't pick up so you don't need to use a referral at that point um and then if you call them and then they hang up because they haven't explicitly verbalized um whether they're giving acceptance or declining the offer um uh, no code needs to be used Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is how to add a code into EMIS, as that's the system um, we use here. It's very similar in system one. So this is the homepage of EMIS, and um, I have selected this, um, this patient, our dummy patient. You can find patients by going to that little um, uh, search button here, and then select uh, either type in the name or NHS number, and then select the right patients, which I won't do now, as it will come up with actual patients. So if you double click on, um, um, no, that's not the case, actually. You have to go into this one, consultations, to actually get the patient record up. So this is this um, dummy patient's record. Um, these are previous consultations. And what I want to do is add a code. So you could go to this green button and say, I want to add a code. So like that. And then it would be nice if... Um, if you put in 106 or 103, but the, the code would come up. But that, that is not the case, as I can show you. Um, you don't want to code superficial x-ray. You want to code um, referral to social prescribing. So what I do is usually put in ref sosh press, and then it comes up. So this is the code that um, is being monitored by um, uh, NHS England. Now, if you would just type in SOSH press, <laughs> as in SOSH prescribing, you see lots of different codes as well. Now, only the referral to SOSH prescribing service um, code and the social prescribing declined codes are used by NHS England for monitoring purposes at the moment. You can use these other codes um, if you want to for yourself for monitoring, but um, it doesn't bring in um, any money or NHS England has no idea what, um, what, um, what you're doing if you use these other codes. So that's why it's so important to stick to referral to social prescribing service. So I'm going to select that code. So this is a way to add a code, which I can't, um, let me see, I think I can't save right now, but here you can see that that's actually the code number that was in the email slide as well, so that's how you know that is the correct code. Now there's another way to add a code, which I use more because I actually add um, my notes in the patient record, so I'm going back to the patient record, and actually I'm going to add a consultation, so I press the big button here itself and then it comes up with some information about the consultation I have with the patient so I will select telephone consultation as I don't speak to them oh I speak to them over the phone most times these days press ok sometimes there's pop-ups coming up for a particular with particular patient information which they can just ignore and ignore this as well 
and then what is helpful if you actually do um, record this in the consultation that you don't add it on the problem um, because if you add a code there so referral to social prescribing it comes up as a patient problem just ignore that again it comes up in green and that means that it, it comes up under the, a summary list of patient problems. Now a referral to social prescriber is not a problem luckily so we just we don't want to have it um, in there so I'm going to take that out. Um, it doesn't really matter where else you put it um, so comments might be a good one to, um, to put it under so social prescribing referral there we go referral to social prescribing this comes up in during the time of COVID. I think it's just automatically, whenever referral comes up in emails, they want to know whether it's urgent or routine, which is not really relevant for um, social prescribing. So I'm just gonna escape and that goes. And then if I save this, it could be that I say, I want to add some notes for myself, some free text about um, what I've done with that patient. I could add some more social information as well, anyway. Most important is that that referral to social prescribing um, service code is in there. So I'm going to save it. And then if I now go into the consultation again, you can see comments referral to social prescribing service. So that means this patient has been coded. Now, what could happen is this patient has been referred to social prescribing. Um, but actually didn't like me and they just declined social prescribing. So what I want to do as well is add the other codes, declines social prescribing. There we go. So then I make sure that both the codes are in, they have been referred to me, but um, they actively declined social prescribing and then I save it as such. Um, so that's how you do it. Um, sometimes there are GPs or nurses or referrers that are really, really proactive and they will put in this referral to social prescribing code themselves. So make sure when someone is referred to you that it's not in the patient record already because um, you don't want that code in there twice unless there has been that person has been referred twice over a period of time, obviously, but there's only one code per, per referral to um, social prescribing. And as far as I believe, so you either, so you also add this code when you proactive call out, you also add this code, um, but you only add it once per patient um, per kind of referral or activity. So if you, if you do um, a number of call outs, as far as I believe, you don't add a uh, code um, more than once. So um, yeah. I hope that's clear. Um, if you don't have access to EMIS yourself, um, EMIS has a way where you can batch at these codes to a whole number of patients at once. So what your um, practice manager or whoever will do that, what they will need is a list in Excel, for example, with all the NHS numbers and then two columns, one column for referral to social prescribing and then another column another column for um, social prescribing declines and that's only for the patients um, who have been referred but have declined um, the service. I hope that's clear. Any any questions Liana or Nassin? Anything that I didn't clarify? I think one thing I wanted to add to the last point is um, for those that don't have access to EMS or System 1 or the, or the, the surgery records and you are sharing Excel spreadsheets, please make sure those spreadsheets are password protected, but your practice yes. manager will be able to advise you on how best to get that kind of, to how to get that kind of data. I'm assuming if you've got patient data in an Excel, you've got their NHS numbers in an Excel spreadsheet with their contact details, that it will have come to you password protected. So um, I'm sure your practice manager or your um, whomever you're sharing, um, the your work with um will be able to guide you on how on on, on policies around yeah. keeping data safe thank you wilma so um just to reiterate um why snow meds are really important it's the the only way nhs england at the moment is measuring uptake of social prescribing and um, so therefore your work is being directly measured through the referrals that you receive and the proactive work that you do as well as a des contract that stipulates payment by referral to the primary care network that you work in with every social prescribing referral that you receive 
Um, and then just focusing really uh, on reporting and monitoring and the way that SNOMED codes can be used to really reinforce the impact and the intervention, the meaningful interventions that you do as link workers. Um, and essentially you're the workforce that provide the social prescribing service to the communities that you work in. Um, um, reporting and monitoring, there's some really interesting things that uh, link workers some very seasoned link workers are doing at the moment with SNOMED codes. So there's something called a dashboard um, where all the SNOMED codes um, sort of are entered onto EMIS system one and there's a back end where everything's sort of collected on like a spreadsheet, almost like a pro forma and then it's collected on a spreadsheet where you can find out some really interesting things um, at a population level, um, you can uh, define SNOMED codes via demographics. Um, you can, there's a multitude of ways that you can really use the data. This may not be part of your job description, but it's good to know that these SNOMED codes in your work can be used for really interesting things to make your case of why your, you, why your intervention to your patients and your communities that you work in, in your primary care network are very important. So I'll hand over to Liana to wrap up. Yeah, so thanks so much both. Um, I We've talked through today some of the basic ways that you can use SNOMED codes. There are obviously much more advanced ways of, of using it in your reporting and monitoring. Um, but essentially, the more referrals that we get, the, the more money coming into the PCN um, and, you know, really positive things for the for the future of social prescribing in the local communities that you guys are supporting. Um, please send any questions you have our way and um, we hope this has been useful today. Thank you.